Hey everybody, Mark Campbell here. We've got another video today for you on lifters. We're going to talk about all the different styles of lifters, the different types of lifters that we make, um, some different tech tips on how to set lifters, proper installation, and just try and cover as, as many basics as we can on, uh, on lifters. All right, so the first lifter that we have on the table here is a hydraulic flat tappet lifter. Um, we'll also reference the solid flat tappet lifter as well when we're talking about these because they do look very, very similar. Um, this style of lifter is, is a pretty basic construction. It does have uh, an oil band typically in it. There are some hydraulics that don't and some solids that don't, just depending on the engine configuration. Um, but uh, in, the, in the top part of the lifter, this is where all the hydraulics are on a hydraulic lifter. So this plunger actually moves up and down and that's what basically takes up the slack in the valve train or the lash on a, on a mechanical lifter um, is, is obviously different than the hydraulic. This particular lifter is out of an Oldsmobile, but really a lot of them look very, very similar. The key part to a lifter is actually the face. It's very, very important. This is a precision ground face on the lifter. It's very, very important that this is done correctly and the taper on the camshaft is correct so that the lifter will physically spin in the bore while the engine is running. Um, once again, the, really the main difference between this and a, and a solid flat tappet lifter is the mechanics inside. The, the solid lifter, which you actually physically set lash on, does not have the hydraulic mechanisms in it. It is literally a solid piece inside. It still has the oil hole that's inside of it because many engines, like I said, with the oil band, do oil up through the push rod. So it's very important that you do get the proper oiling up through there. But otherwise, the, the hydraulic flat tappet and solid lifter are quite a simple little piece, but very, very precision as far as what goes on inside. The tolerances inside this lifter are millionths of an inch. So, um, Sometimes you will get a lifter that sticks. Typically it's caused from debris that's inside the lifter, but we'll also in, in the later part of the video talk a little bit about prepping these and getting them ready for your engine. All right, so just to continue on a little bit with the hydraulic and flat tappet mechanical style lifter, just wanted to bring up a couple other little points. As I mentioned earlier about the, the taper and the rotation of the lifter, that's typically where most failures will begin. If you don't have the proper taper and or the proper uh, grind on the bottom of the lifter, it will basically stop turning and that's not a good thing. Um, that will basically wear out the camshaft, wear out the lifter, and it's not the camshaft's fault at that point. It's, it's a combination of or the lifter is incorrect or probably the single biggest thing that we have with flat tappet engines is the oil. This is number one. All of the oil that you buy from wherever you buy it from, the auto parts store today, does not have the proper amounts of zinc in it. Plain and simple. Um, so that's why at Comp we have a specific hot rod and muscle car oil. We also have a specific break-in oil for the initial break-in process. And it is vitally important that you use this. Now there are some other brands out on the market that do have the right stuff. Other than the comp stuff, we would recommend a driven break-in oil or their hot rod series oil as well. Both of those have the same basic formulation as this oil does and the fact that they have a high zinc level and low detergent level. And that's the thing that you must remember. Um, but those two points are very, very important to remember when you're talking about a flat tap at camshaft. The lifter rotation, the taper on the camshaft, and also the type of oil that you're running. So the next lifters we're going to talk about are hydraulic roller lifters. There are multiple different versions of hydraulic roller lifters. You can see this version right here is what we classify as a retrofit hydraulic roller, which has the tie bar that attaches the two lifters. A conventional OEM or drop-in replacement style hydraulic lifter basically has a square um, or flat faces on both sides of it so that you can put your stock dog bones or for example in an LS you can put the lifter up into the lifter tray. Uh, so there are multiple different styles but the basics of the lifter itself are the same. 
So these share a lot of commonalities with a solid roller lifter and the fact that they are a needle bearing style roller. Now there are solid uh, lifters that have bushings in them. We'll talk about that in a bit. Um, but this lifter, the roller, like I said, does have a needle bearing in it. Once you get into the insides of the lifters, it is very, very similar inside to the lifters we were talking about before. Typically when you're into a, um, a hydraulic lifter like this as well, we do have two different versions. We have a short travel and a standard travel lifter. That basically just means how far the plunger physically moves inside the bore. And a short travel lifter typically is designed for higher RPM use or also something with more spring pressure on it as well. We'll talk about that a little bit more as well. But that's the basics of a hydraulic roller lifter. Um, like I said, tie bar versus non-tie bar lifter. One thing that's very important, I don't know if you can see it real good on the camera here, but these do, they are marked with the logo, but they also have an arrow on them. I don't know if you can see that real well or not, but it's very, very important that when you put these lifters into the engine, that that lifter is facing, or the arrow is facing the right direction. As you can see, when we put them in here, they have an offset to them. They go in the bore and they go straight. If they happen to be in the wrong way and you were to put them into the bore, they're gonna sit crooked. This roller is going to physically drag across the face of the camshaft and in a matter of minutes, you're gonna tear that camshaft up. So it's extremely important that you look for that arrow. If there is no arrow or no marking, then you typically, I would also just go with the logo, make sure it's facing up in the right direction, but I can tell you pretty much all of our comp lifters, if they have to go a specific way, they have an arrow or a logo. So that's very, very important to pay attention when you're doing that. These particular lifters are a short travel and they do also have the coating on them, but some of them are just standard silver in color as well too. But that's a real brief overview of the hydraulic roller lifters and what they're all about. All right, so the last set of lifters that we're gonna talk about here are solid roller lifters. Typically used for race applications, but there are certainly applications where guys use them on the street. Um, and we'll talk about why you should or shouldn't do that uh, in certain applications. But first we'll give you a quick rundown of, we basically have three general styles of solid lifters. We have our classic Endurex style lifter, we have our Sportsman Series lifter, is what you can see in this uh, video. And then we also have our new Race XD Series lifter. So I'll, I'll tell you a little bit about the differences between those lifters. So the originals, um, the Endurex lifter, very, very good lifter, but I'm gonna say it's honestly, it's, it's technology that we developed probably 15 or 20 years ago. Still a very good lifter, but more designed for your lower spring pressure type applications mild street applications. Um, there, are, there are some race applications that those lifters would work good in, but typically anytime you go to a race application, you wanna go to either the Sportsman Series lifter that we see here or to the Race XD. The big difference between the two is the axle package and the wheel and how the body is physically designed. A couple of key points about these, you can see these extra oil holes that are in the lifter. Um, this, of course, creates an oil path up to the push rod to oil up the top end. This oil hole here, it actually sprays right down onto the wheel and also directly into the axle package. So very, very important for a needle bearing lifter specifically that they get lots and lots of oil, especially at low speed. A bushed lifter also does require a considerable amount of oil, but it's not as important at low speed as it is to a, to a, uh, a needle bearing. The big difference that people always ask, when should I go to a change from a needle, like this one is here, to a bushed lifter? The basic answer is, and I mean there's, there's a whole bunch of different reasons, but the basic answer typically is spring pressure. My general answer is, is as soon as you get to around a thousand pounds of open pressure, so that when the valve spring is fully compressed and you're at maximum pressure, once you're at about a thousand pounds or more, you should go to a bushed style lifter. We do offer that in this, the 96818-16 is what this needle bearing is, for example, for the small block Chevrolet. A bushed lifter in the same thing, same part number, just with a B. 
So it's a 96818B-16. And the only difference between the two lifters is simply where the when the axle is pushed in, instead of having a needle bearing inside, it has a bushing inside of it. But all the oiling and everything like that on the lifter is the same. The tie bar, basically the entire lifter package itself is absolutely identical. So hopefully that answers a few questions about solid roller lifters, the differences between the different lifters that we have, and why, when and why they should be used. All right, so now we're just going to briefly discuss a few things about setting lifters and lash on a hydraulic and a solid, and also the proper procedure when you go to install these lifters into your engine. So if we're talking about a hydraulic lifter like these two that you see here, if it's a conventional, what I'm going to say, long travel style lifter, an OE type hydraulic lifter, typically the best place to set them is somewhere between half to one turn down. Now that can vary a little bit depending on the engine, depending on if it's got a steel head or an aluminum head. Um, an aluminum head, of course, expands very differently than a steel head, so you have to make sure that you know what application you have. Hopefully you can tell the difference between a steel head and an aluminum head um, and get it set right, but that's typically where you're gonna set a conventional style lifter. Now, the short travel lifter is very different, and this is very subjective to the application. There are multiple different ways to do this. One of the schools of thought is, is a short travel lifter you set with very, very, very minimal preload. In our, in our instructions, I believe we say somewhere in the 10 to 15 thousandths of an inch, um, and that does work very, very well. But there is an exception to every rule, and we've experienced over the last many, many years testing stuff on our Spintron and our engine dyno and all of our R&D that we've done with our customers is that on a short travel hydraulic roller lifter, if you're trying to turn a lot of RPM, you're trying to run more spring pressure to control the valve train, the best way to set a short travel lifter is to have it bled down, to find out exactly how much travel from the top to the bottom of the travel, you're basically going to try and bottom that piston out and back it out about 10 to 20 thousandths of an inch. That does two things. One is, of course, I mean, it, it puts a little bit more uh, stability into the system as far as um, you know that obviously you're getting more preload in it, but it reduces the amount of oil that is inside the lifter. When you do that, the lifter has the ability to recover much, much faster if it does go into a little bit of a valve float situation. So, but the one thing you gotta remember about when you do that and you're bottoming that piston out and bringing it back up, you have to be extremely accurate. Very, very accurate. You literally have to go through every single lifter and every single valve that you're setting and get it very, very precise. So you have to be a little cautious with that method, but that does work really, really well. Once you get into a solid lifter, of course, now we're talking about lash. Now that can be with a solid flat tappet or a solid roller. Typically, lash ranges on a solid camshaft from somewhere as little as eight to 10 thousandths, which is definitely on the tight side, but most of the tight lash stuff is 14, 16, 18, and can go up as much as 28 or 30 on some of the older school style lobes. So that's, that's something that obviously is the same between these two. The process is the same as far as how you set valves. We're not going to go through the actual procedure right now, but we will maybe cover that in a, in a later video. Uh, but what the one thing that I do want to talk about is preparation of the lifter before it goes in the engine. This is probably the single most important thing. Number one, read the instructions. Does everything I'm about to tell you? is in the instructions. But I'll give you a quick overview. Number one, most important thing, when these lifters come in the package, we spray them down with an anti-rust agent. You must clean that off for multiple reasons. One, it is not a lubricant. It is a terrible lubricant. The other thing is, is that if that anti-rust agent, if this lifter happens to be sitting on the shelf of somebody's speed parts place or a warehouse or something like that for a long time, that anti-rust agent can actually make this lifter stick, the plunger stick inside. So it's very, very important that you not only clean this lifter, but before you install it in the engine, you should drop it into a bucket of oil and soak it for a while. 
That does two things. One is it makes sure that there's oil everywhere. Two, that oil will actually, in fact, help get rid of all of that anti-rust agent that's inside the lifter. The same thing applies to a roller, and probably more important with a roller, whether it's a hydraulic or a solid, to soak that lifter in oil. You clean it off real good with mineral spirits, like it says in the instructions, and then you soak that oil, or soak the, the lifter in oil. Typically recommend whatever you're gonna put in the engine, if you're putting a break-in oil in it, if you're putting a synthetic oil in it, whatever you're running in that engine, obviously if you're breaking it in, it's good to put a break-in oil in it, but whatever you're running in that engine, that's what you wanna soak that lifter in. So remember, clean them and prep them properly before you put them in the engine. Don't pull them out of the box and just drop them in. You will have problems. All right, so I think we've covered most of the important parts about all these different lifters, the hydraulic and mechanical style flat tappet, the hydraulic roller and the solid roller. Um, just again, to go over a couple of brief things, probably the most important thing you need to remember is clean the lifters before you put them in. Clean them and soak them. That is probably the single most important thing to remember. Um, also, select the right lifter for your application. Many, many, many times people use the wrong roller lifter in the application that they're running and it causes a failure. And they're upset because obviously it not only tears up the camshaft and the lifter, but it can also tear up a lot, a lot of other parts. So. We put very detailed instructions in all of these. Please read the instructions. That's what they're there for. I know it's not a manly thing to do to read instructions, but please read the instructions, clean them, put them in, and I guarantee you'll have long, long life on all of your parts. Thanks again for watching, and hopefully you learned something.